What's up everybody and welcome back to another episode of Lockdown 23 and 1. And if you are new to this channel, we talk about all things crime and prison related. People telling their craziest and wildest moments all across this country and how they survived the penitentiary. Alright, got many stories and I got a lot of videos lined up for you. A lot of great interviews and you would think talking about prison gets old, but I swear, man. Every time it starts getting old, I interview someone, it's like, damn, that was an amazing story. But prisons can be very different, okay? And I'm talking about uh, the structures and the rules and the regulations can be so different sometimes that if you don't know what you're walking into, it could cost you your life, okay? People are dying across this country in the system all the time. And that's what my video was gonna be today, was inmate versus inmate, cellmates taking other cellmates' lives. This shit happens all the time. But, uh, like I said, this is kind of spur of the moment. Uh, I've interviewed someone on this channel that became very popular very quickly, okay? His name is Mitch, he did 38 years in uh, CDC, California Department of Corrections, and to do 38 years and make it out, 38 years straight, and make it out alive, it's quite an accomplishment, you know, uh, just to go to prison for that long and come out with a good head on your shoulders. Uh, it, it, it's enough to say a lot about that man's character. You know, he is out here. He's got his own website, his own merchandise, hardintentions.com. Uh, and after our first uh, interview, when I had him on my channel, I told him, I said, man, look, <laughs> you need to start your own YouTube channel, man. You've got a wealth of wisdom and knowledge. And it would be a shame for it to go to waste. You need to spread this knowledge. You know, that's what I'm thinking to myself. But I did tell him, I said, you need to start a channel, man. And he did. He did. Hard Intentions YouTube channel has begun. And what you're about to see today uh, is just a couple short clips of him interviewing me. That's right. And it was a pleasure. It was a pleasure. Thank you very much, Mitch, for making me your first interview on your channel. I'm sure your channel is going to blow up, my friend. Uh, but yeah, go go support a fellow convict that has done his time in the pen and is out here trying to do things the right way. You know, uh, not many people do that. They come out here and do the same old shit and they're back in the pen before you know it. And that goes for anybody on my channel, ladies and gentlemen. If they're out there doing the right thing, they've been to the penitentiary and, you know, people go in and out like it's like it's nothing. You know, I used to have guards tell me, we'll leave the light on for you. You'll be back, you know. Uh, that's how uh, frequently people go back to lock up. So all the guys out here that's been on my channel, man, uh, and Mitch and everyone who's who's doing their thing and has started a YouTube channel after coming onto my platform, uh, it's an amazing thing, man. And I salute to every last one of you who are doing the right and positive thing. And I strongly urge my viewers to support every last one of them. Support them, man, to the fullest, you know, because uh, it's not easy. It's not easy doing the, the straight and narrow. It's not, man. Uh, unfortunately, the good money is the slow money, you know? So if you can battle through it, or luckily find a path to where you make good legal fast money, I mean, nothing but respect to all of y'all, you know? Uh, but yeah, let's get into it. Sorry about the long intro. This is a few clips of Mitch interviewing Death. Good morning. My name's Mitch, and I'm here interviewing Death from Death. Lockdown 23 and 1. What's uh, up, buddy? Good morning. Good morning, man. It's a pleasure to come on to your show uh, after having you on my show quite a bit. This is a good change of pace, you know? Yeah, well, I figured I should have you as my first uh, YouTube video. Excellent, man. Brand new Excellent. channel. Yep. Uh, so, you live on the East Coast, right? East Coast, Virginia. Virginia Beach is where I reside right. now. So we're like worlds apart in the same country. Uh, yeah. You know, since you got a, you know, basically uh, your channel's about prison and stuff, and I've been to prison, that's sort of kind of what brought us together. Uh, what I like to ask, what, uh, how old were you when you first went to prison or started getting involved with uh, things that led you toward prison? Well, uh, what I went to prison for was something that I wasn't even doing on the streets. Uh, you know, when I, it started when I was about 13 or 14. Yeah. Uh, I started breaking into cars, you know, just stealing CD players and stuff like that. Might joyride a few cars. Uh, I've even done burglaries, and I started stepping up my criminal activities to, uh, you know, robbing dope dealers and stuff like that. 
yeah. doing even bigger burglaries. Uh, it was more planned. It wasn't I mean, when you know when you're 13, 14. If the door is unlocked, you're going in. You know, this, these yeah. were more planned as I got older. Uh, in 17, uh, you know, I graduated high school at 17 years old, mm-hmm. and shortly after, I'd say probably a month after, uh, I ended up stabbing someone. And the whole situation occurred on my parents' property because I was living with my parents. And it was all about it was all behind a girl. Uh, I still don't even know the whole story behind it because uh, the guys, I didn't know anything about them that got out the car to try to jump me at my uh, parents' house. Right. But I did. I went and got a weapon. I stabbed uh, the guy up that swung on me first. And, you know, I wasn't out there really committing a lot of physical, you know, uh, harm to people it was just i was a thief you know uh so going to prison for that was not something i was expecting you know it was uh it was like impulsive or i mean it was you know i was violent to an extent you know if you mess with me i'll do something but um yeah you know uh she kind of went from like vandalism to theft and so like the theft stuff that it uh, were you like involved with drugs and stuff? Because I know you just mentioned like robbing drug dealers or yeah, I mean, were you like smoking uh, weed or using drugs or drinking or anything like that. Yeah, I was definitely uh, dabbling in all kinds of stuff. But to be honest, you know, a lot of people might laugh at me, but I was addicted to weed, man. You know, I was yeah. smoking a lot of weed a day, and that shit yeah. gets expensive. You know, uh, but you know, ecstasy, <laughs> cocaine, uh, stuff right. like that. I was dabbling, messing around with, but I knew. I knew that that shit was not what I was supposed to be dealing with. You know, it would kill me if I keep on going. So I would always end it, you know, three months, four months after doing it and move on to something else. But weed was always consistent. And weed is what I need. Yeah. And then when you get older, you know, uh, I need to, I didn't want to work. So I just wanted money for clothes, partying. Were you drinking too? Oh, yeah. I was, I wasn't drinking too much uh, unless I was at parties and stuff like that. But, uh, it was mainly just weed, man. And yeah. uh, I yeah. got, you know, I started playing with guns. And, you know, right. the, the thievery turned into armed robberies. And okay. when I realized the power of a gun, then I realized, you know what, we can hit up some bigger fish. And well, guns are kind of intimidating to people. <laughs> they are, man. Uh, you a gun in and, someone's face, they'll probably do just about whatever you want. Yeah, and I was a little dude. I was tiny. I'm still, I'm still a little guy. I mean, I got some muscle, but back then I was... I look like a young, frail little punk, you know, and uh, when I first put that gun to someone's face, I was terrified, man. I ain't going to lie. I was terrified, but I said, screw it. I'm going to try it. I heard my friends yeah. were doing it and having good results, so I said, I'm going to do it, and uh, first time I did it, I'll never forget it. I was terrified, but after the initial 30 seconds of seeing their uh, you know, facial expressions and how much right. fear was put into their heart, it was like right. it was an overwhelming feeling feeling you know like kind of godlike to make someone do right i've heard you people want. say that before like it felt like they had power of god man the shit that i did in the past robbing and stealing man right. some of that shit you know that shit is is like the bottom of the barrel to me and, and right. i can't you know i strongly uh feel bad about all the stuff that i did and looking back at it you know that's not the type of guy i am i'm a very kind-hearted guy so Right. It makes me sick uh, thinking about some of that shit that I did, man. And, and Yeah, it's kind of embarrassing to think about some of the things I did when I was a kid before I kind of woke up. Yeah, it's embarrassing, so, uh, man. That's a good word for it. But one one thing before we get into the prison scene about jail, sooner or later, you know, within a month or so, I started having guys really uh, give me the game because I, I, I was preparing for prison. You know, I was right. preparing for pretty much my rest of my life in prison. I was facing abduction. That was a serious, serious charge with firearms. So I was, that was my life. I started getting plucks. I started getting tattoos in jail. I was preparing for yeah. the pen in every way possible, getting all, gleaning all the information from anyone and everyone that's been there. And that's typically what happens in jail. You know, what's prison life? Hey, what, what, what? It might be all right, man. You right. know, and uh, so. Once you got in there, like, I know it's not segregated there. So, like, are there any types of politics there other than, like, race things? Yeah, the politics, uh, there's definitely politics in there, you know. But let's say you want to, a white guy wants to go, had a problem with a black guy, and he wants to fight him. 
you yeah. can fight him right then, right there on the spot. You might, if the black guy is affiliated with some gang or something, you might have some uh, repercussions afterwards. But uh, it ain't gonna start all a huge white on black riot, you know. Uh, yeah. But it's mainly gang politics and a gang out there that ran pretty much everything. And from what I hear, still to this day, is the Bloods. They ran everything in there. Uh, everything. But the, yeah, but the white guys. Uh, and so what if the white guys are doing stuff like uh, some type of illegal activity in prison and then this, uh, uh, the blacks, you know, the gang, black gangs, said, like, hey, man, we, we, we want a piece of that. You know, oh, it happens. It's and happened. So, and, and then does that create a racial thing or what? Mitch, uh, and I, this is not to break down or put down any kind of uh, racial background yeah. or anything, but from what I've seen, Okay, yeah. white dudes in prison. Uh, I mean, if they were bringing in some kind of work like that, they usually kept it to themselves. And if they did find word of it, some people, yeah, they'd be like, "Let me get that," and they wouldn't say, "Let me get a piece of it." They'd be like, "Let me get it all," uh, or all right. yeah. And the white guys see. I think they just didn't have uh, not only the numbers, but they didn't have the structure. You know, so when something happened to a white guy, the other white guys just sit there and watched, man. And, really? And that's all there was to it. I mean, they... So they don't really realize, that, you know, next time it's them. Yeah, they, they have know. that kind of mentality, like... if Because out here, it's like, look, man, you know, the white dudes stick together, you know, Mexicans stick together. And then within the Mexicans, they have Northern California Mexicans, Southern California. And then uh, Bloods and Crips and... Other, they're all separated too. I mean, they go to the same yard, and they uh, there's prisons where they they function on the same yard. Yeah. Like when I was in Corcoran, on the main line there, they're they function separately. Yeah. You know, even the blacks, they, they're because they have Crips and Bloods, you know. Uh, yeah. And that, but they don't tell the white dudes nothing, you know. I mean. Yeah, that that's uh, when I that's used to a, do things in there. A little, you know. There's no. You know we're taking that right because that would be that's that's cause for killing people yeah it's cause for riot killing people and and like i said i mean you know some establishments you know the three white guys will stand up with each other uh but the majority of what i've seen from county from city jail to all the prisons that i've been in white dudes had no power they were the first ones to be extorted first ones to get their cheeks taken and that's all there was to it. And there wasn't nothing that they were doing about it. You know, they would just hope and pray that it wasn't them that was getting attacked the next day. Right. Uh, and of course, you know, there's a lot of white dudes that were GD, part of these black organizations. So, I mean. Oh, really? Yeah. The, the, What's GD? The, What's that mean? Like, uh, gangster Disciple. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, you would see a lot of these white dudes that. They're not, they're not, uh, I guess you would say, just rolling with whites. They would be rolling with the black guys, and that's how it was. Uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure there was, you know, prison flips and flops all the time. So there right. might be certain times where a certain group of white guys came in there and they had a little bit of uh, say so. But from what I've seen, eight years in and out of the system, the first one to be victimized every time was a white dude yeah, yeah for the most part uh you know let me let me just show you something really quick in prison you know tattoos mean something right right uh the majority of the time well you know a b from what i hear they rocked the clover correct uh yeah the shamrock and uh look you see this you see the shamrock on my wrist right there yeah okay i got that in prison okay in this high level prison and not one person asked me if i was a b not yeah. one white guy said, "Hey, you claiming that?" Not one. That just goes to show you that yeah, there ain't nothing in there. I didn't have not one person ask me if I was affiliated with a white organization behind that tattoo. Yeah. Now, and if I went to Cali, they'll end up probably cutting it off my damn wrist or something. You know, well, uh, you know you'd have to cover that up. Yeah, cover it up or something like that. And uh, yeah. so it, you know, that just should show you right there that the white yeah. gang organization just wasn't even prevalent in that. Oh, that's crazy. Prison.